Welcome to Watch, Review, Repeat. This is the podcast where two best friends discuss the latest in film and television and then do it all over again the following week. My name is Colton Brown and joining me is Andrew Meadows. yippee ki Colton Brown. How you doing, partner? <laughs> woo Doing pretty good. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> Giddy up, cowboy. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sure tootin', I'm sure tootin excited talking about this show we're fixing to talk about here. Oh, shit. Uh, rootin' tootin' yeah, I, excited. I'm pretty tootin' excited to talk about uh, bonus episode 10 myself. Uh, uh, man, uh that was uh, that was a far more rousing start than I anticipated. Uh, <laughs> yes, bonus episode number ten. Uh, welcome, listeners. Uh, I hope you're already enthralled with what we have in store for you. Um, we're talking about the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, the Netflix film, the latest entry from the Coen Brothers. And uh, it's going to be a fun episode, a little bit different than our other bonus episodes. Uh, I think it's the only bonus episode to date that will center on what is technically considered a single film. Uh, But as you'll find out, this film is not like other films. Uh, And it actually will, I think the episode will kind of take on a structure similar to our other bonus episodes um, when we get to there. So a little bit of housekeeping to our supporters on Patreon. We want to thank you for your support. You are the ones that have timed exclusive access to our bonus episodes, so you're the first ones to get to listen to it. $2 a month uh, helps us out. Um, We talked about it a little bit while back, um, but we got a uh, mic purchased uh, to help with the uh, the setup for the podcast, and uh, that was all funded courtesy of uh, Patreon support, which was pretty awesome. So for those of you that are listening and are not Patreon supporters, uh, we offer that as an avenue, again, to kind of help us out financially in any sort of way, to keep the podcast running, help us with equipment costs, stuff like that. And uh, in return, we offer time exclusive access to these bonus episodes, like the one you're listening to right now, uh, and early access to all of our regular episodes, uh, which is a pretty cool perk, if you ask me. So uh, I would encourage you to... Uh, support us if that is something that intrigues you uh, you may do so by heading to our website which is watchreviewrepeat.com and click on the premium tab click on the become a patron button that will redirect you to Patreon and you'll be uh, well on your way once you once you put your, your little info in there so <laughs> your little info <laughs> a little info uh, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs uh, you want to talk about it? I am excited to talk about this I actually saw this before you did you did. Well, actually, you, you did. You, you mentioned actually, uh, I think at least once on the podcast, on the regular um, podcast, you, you know, you talked about it in one of our catching up sections. As I recall, you said you liked it. So, so I suppose that's somewhat of a spoiler for, for you know, your, your reactions when we get there in just a second. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it came out in November of uh, 18. So uh, I think about a month and a half ago. So it's, it's, it's been, you know, available on Netflix for some time now. And uh, I myself just got around to watching it. We were kind of, you know, struggling with what we wanted to do for our bonus episode for this month. It's coming a little bit later in the month. And so it was kind of, it was difficult because we didn't really have that much time to, to do something, you know, a little bit more extensive and and kind of the vein uh, of our uh, previous bonus episodes. But this is the perfect kind of film to talk about for a bonus episode. I mean, it's a Coen Brothers film to begin with. And that's maybe a good starting point is the Coen Brothers are some of the most talented directors out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that the strength, I would say, for the Coen Brothers is that they're so varied in their approach to film. Like, every Coen Brother film offers something a little bit different. Um, But it's always undeniably a Coen Brothers film. Absolutely. Yeah, they have a, a certain style to them, a certain kind of uh, dark, humorous side to them. Um, but they, they, I mean, they're, they're, they're definitely some of the, you know, the directors at the top of their craft, I would say. Absolutely. So I wanted to ask you, um, I mean, I, I haven't seen all the Coen Brothers films, admittedly. Um, but I think both of us have seen a, a good chunk of them. I wanted to wanted to see maybe what your your favorite Coen Brothers film was. If you, oh, shit. If you had to, maybe maybe some favorite ones. I don't I don't want to put you too too much on the spot. But do you have any have any ones that come to mind of like yeah. that is like peak Coen Brothers to me? Peak Coen Brothers to me is probably the Big Lebowski. Yeah, 
uh, that is quintessential Coen Brothers experience, I think. Um, but you know, if you're going to talk about other other Coen Brother films, I think uh, I think Fargo's worth noting. Uh, Fargo does a very good job of. I mean, the dude is almost like, uh, or the Big Lebowski is. Um, it's got some really good tropes and very similar tropes to Fargo. Uh, but Fargo, Fargo is an entertaining film and it's about a car salesman, oddly enough. And it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting film. Uh, I really enjoy Fargo. Um, but then you have some other things as well. Like you have, uh, a serious man, which is really good. Um, I don't know, man. I, 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 I really like all their movies. I can't think of a movie that, I don't know. That's a hard thing to really discern which one's my favorite i mean if i had to if i immediately asked me hey you want to watch coen brothers movie which one do you watch i'd probably say big lebowski i i like that one a lot that one's that one's it's definitely I, I think one of the most rewatchable films that they have you know i think that they they have some films that kind of fall more into the the humorous style and then some that are kind of more uh straight laced i would say so like burn after reading is another example i think that's probably yes. closer to the big lebowski that's and correct. then yeah. maybe on the other end of the spectrum, you've got No Country for Old Men. Yeah, you know what I mean. Not exactly a a, a very humorous movie, I wouldn't say, but a damn fine film uh, in and of itself. One that's great. True Grit is another one uh, that you know. There's there's obviously moments of levity in those, but I, I think on the whole, kind of lean more towards the being serious films. But I think it, again, I think it kind of shows the strengths of their talents that they're able to. Just go in these weird different directions and pretty much nail it every time. And uh, if, if, I, if I may uh, use this opportunity to transition into the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, um, which I'll, I'll set up a little bit more, I think that the interesting thing about this movie is by its nature, it allows the Coen brothers to do all of those things in one kind of package. Right. If you mm-hmm. know what I mean. You know, sure. it's, it's very... This maybe sounds... Um, negative it's it's all over the place but it's all over the place by design uh, and that is because it is a compilation of six different shorts um, so let me let me go ahead and set it up and then we'll get into some non-spoiler thoughts to begin with uh, so as I mentioned came out on Netflix November 16th uh, so it's available to watch on Netflix so that's a that's a nice nice accessible movie uh, uh, Coen Brothers not only directed it, they also wrote it. Uh, it uh, it stars a bunch of people, um, but I have, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, obviously every short kind of has its own cast, um, but there's some big names kind of throughout each of the shorts. So uh, I think the most notable names that I could kind of pull from each one would be Tim Blake Nelson, uh, James Franco, Liam Neeson, Tom Waits, Zoe Kazan, and uh, Brendan Gleeson. But uh, that's not to discount uh, the uh, the good performances uh, across the board uh, throughout all of the shorts. So these six shorts are six tales of life and violence in the Old West, you know, the Old West in America. Uh, and each of them follows a little bit of a different story, um, a, a lot of bit of a different story. Each one is very different from the other <laughs> um, in terms of story, uh, upsetting, tone, tone yeah, uh, you know. You name it. Um, so the first one is about a singing gunslinger, uh, and that's called The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Of course, that shares its name with the, uh, the actual title of the, uh, the film itself. Second is about a bank robber called uh, Nir Algodonis. The third is about a traveling empresario called Meal Ticket. The fourth about an elderly prospector called All Gold Canyon. The fifth about a wagon train called The Girl Who Got Rattled. And last but not least, the final short is about a group of stagecoach travelers called the mortal remains so uh just to kind of set things up for our listeners we're going to do uh spoiler filled deep dives well i don't know how deep but we're going to talk uh in full spoilers about each short separately but before we get there uh, i think it's probably worth talking uh you know from a non-spoiler from a recommendation standpoint uh, how you felt about this movie in general. You know, obviously taking into account the fact that each short is going to appeal to people differently. Each one, again, has its own very unique flavor to it. But there are some broad strokes I think you can paint about the the experience in general. So sure. I'll let you take it from there. Um, I think, uh, I think first and foremost... Um, 
I think that the 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 score, the sound, I think the soundtrack and the score, um, I think both are uh, exceptional. I think they're very good. Um, that is probably the, the the most memorable thing I think so far as the 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 sound and everything from the movie. It's 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 really good. Um, I think that the the cast is exceptional. I think they're very good as well. Um, and I, you know, I, when I watched the show, when I watched the movie, um, I just, uh, both times I, I, I watched them uh, just straight through. Um, and, uh, just, you know, I don't know, as one viewing experience. Um, but you don't have to approach it that way. And I think that's a, it's a fascinating, um, fascinating way they crafted this is you can, and, and on Netflix of all places, you know, you can, you can take it episode by episode if you want, or if you, however you want to view it, you can view it, uh, which is which is pretty good. Uh, I think that's a I think it's an exciting modern way to tell stories, uh, little bite sized nuggets, if you will. Um, and I think that uh, I think it's got really high points that are funny and humorous, uh, and then I think it's got a lot of uh, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of dark shit as well. Um, it's got you I know some stories one in particular is just the holy shit it's really dark it's really it's not it's, it's not very nice um but uh it, it it's all entertaining and um i I highly recommend that you watch it because with there being six stories there will be something that you enjoy I'm sure um uh, and uh and it's the not only is the acting very good and the the score and the soundtrack's awesome and um but the cinematography is beautiful um and i think that you know you were talking about broad strokes um you know just general vibes of the of, of the film um i think it's shot really well uh the way that they they shot the 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 the, the vast vistas the vast vistas my V's words are coming good today. It's a, it's a strong um, alliteration there, my friend. Yes. Very strong. Uh, the, yeah, they have huge panning shots of the open west, and it's totally awesome. It's totally awesome. Also a good it's band very, name, as a side note. What is it? Vast Vistas, good band name, the yeah? Vast Vistas, yeah. Um, I'd go so, see them live. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, the cinematography is beautiful. I actually read, uh, I can't, I read it when I, in, in November, so don't, I, I'm, I don't know, it's probably very bad paraphrasing, but um, it was not an easy movie to shoot, um, apparently. Uh, it was all, I don't know, shot on location and stuff, and uh, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't the easiest thing to shoot. So uh, kudos to them for getting that done, because you can tell uh, it's a very well-made movie. And I like the... Um, I know I keep going on here, but the on uh, the, the subject matter I think is is full of heart, uh, and I think that's uniform across all six um, all six shorts. Uh, you know, they all deal with different things and the American dream, and um, and I don't know. It's just really touching movie. All the stories are. I, I really enjoy them. We'll get into it on the, each individual. What do you think? Don't let me rattle on. I've been rattling on for seems a, well. A bit. The longer you rattle on, the less I think I have to say because uh, you covered a lot of it. Um, so yes, absolutely. Um, I will echo the sentiments about the score, uh, soundtrack. Uh, full credit owed to Carter Burwell uh, for his work uh, on uh, this film. Acting stellar across the board. Um, obviously, there's some big names kind of here and there, but each character you know each actor portraying each character in any of these shorts great um really great work across the board um no arguments there i think for me what i like about this and i don't know that i've always been a fan of western type settings and and, uh, you know this is a western in, in in some ways but it's not i wouldn't say your prototypical western film um certainly obviously not by design uh, or obviously not in, in the way that it's designed, but in the subject matter, it's definitely takes a very, takes a very varied approach. How was that for another alliteration? Very of varied. Working yes. those V's. Yes. Yeah. Very varied uh, <laughs> vistas. Uh, what was, what was yours? Something uh, with vistas. Vast vistas. Very varied 
fast vistas. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Uh, and you may call me V. <laughs> That's a good pull. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, I I I I find myself drawn to this setting. Maybe it's because I'm you know neck deep in Red Dead Redemption, so I, I'm I'm naturally inclined towards the the Western setting uh, right now. But I feel like this does such a, a great job of capturing life in that era. You know, and it, and it does it from the, the the variety of perspectives. Some have a little bit of a tinge of humor to it, and some are just very dour. Some, you know, are are hopeless. Some are filled with hope. You know, and I think that that's cool because it gives all watchers an opportunity to to, to find something that maybe be closer to what they like. You know, I think there's going to be something here for everyone. I think people, and and. and uh, I would say across the board, all six are very good shorts. There's not one I disliked. However, that said, and we'll get into it um, at the end of our discussion, there are some that I enjoyed more. However, I think that, you know, when it comes down to it, if someone had probably the exact opposite of my ranking, my eventual ranking, I don't know that I would think that they're crazy. You know, I would think like, yeah, I think it's just personal preference with a lot of these. Sure. Um, they're all exceptionally well made, uh, really cleverly written. Uh, most of them have interesting subject matters and, and very different subject matters, very varied subject matters, if you will. <laughs> um, so there's really, I think, something here for everyone. Unless you know, uh, you know, if you're one of those folks, you know, maybe you don't like musicals, maybe you don't like the western setting. I don't know. You know, I guess there are people out there that may not be predisposed to this sort of thing. But I, I think that it's engaging on its own merits. And I, I think that maybe even if you're not, you know, someone that's, that's you know, game for something like this, I think that there's, there's something worthwhile for you. Um, I actually meant to tack on my thoughts. You said you watched it straight through. Right. I took the opposite approach. I did basically one at a time. You know, sometimes with a day or a couple of days in between, and okay, you know, yeah. kind of let I kind of let each one simmer, and I enjoyed that approach. I think that the movie could absolutely work if you you know watched it straight through. It you know it's north of two hours; it's not super long. It's pretty normal length for a film, um, but I enjoyed having that time. You know, like episodic television yeah. to kind of just and it's not as know, jarring that let, way either. You, you let it simmer, yeah, and and yeah, I think maybe that could be the thing is you really like one, and then the next one's very different. You know, and that's absolutely the case. Even short one to short two, it's night and day in terms of tone between them. You know what I mean? And and so if you are expecting one thing and then it kind of gives you something else, you could get a sense of whiplash potentially from that. And sure. I, I guess that could be somewhat problematic. But I think as long as you know walking in to expect that, um, you know, if you're going to sit down and watch, you know, all two plus hours of it, if you walk in expecting that, I don't think that's an issue. But I, I could definitely see if you're... If you're not aware, if you're thinking, oh, this is going to be uh, full two hours about Mr. Buster Scruggs, it's not. You know, that's not really a spoiler, but the Ballad of Buster Scruggs is, you know, actually its own short and it just happens that the film is named after that. I feel like that's somewhat unfortunate. I think I almost feel like the, the film should be called something different. Um, but but I, is it really? I, I mean, I don't know. It's like, uh, you know, it's. For me, it's not that big of a deal. I just think that it's one of those things where I don't know what I would title it alternatively, but I think if there was something that was a little bit clearer that, hey, this is not just about this, but hey, there's also five other things here. Because, you know, I think the first one is only 20-ish minutes, somewhere around there. And so then you've got, you know, close to two hours worth of content to follow it up with. I think, I just think if you didn't think this was going to be a series of shorts walking in, that would be very jarring. Yeah, that is true. That's a fair statement. I know. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I don't want to cut you off. I just want to make. May. I just want to make a side note. Um, okay. I think in that article I was reading about the uh, the way they shot the film, uh, they were also talking about the way that they acquired funding for this film, uh, and I thought that was a really interesting read. Do you know anything about that? Um, I. 
I, I mean, I think Netflix was the one that funded it, right? Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. No. That? No. No. They produced it, but they. Uh, they. The, I. I don't know. I can't remember for the life of me. It was a really good article, and I can't remember. I can't remember who wrote it or where it came from. Um, but they were talking about how. Um, either they they were going to pitch it towards a a, a big a a big production studio, um, but. Maybe they had, maybe they got denied because it's not a superhero film or it's this or it's that, it's not that you know what I mean. So they pitched it to Netflix. Netflix picked it up and it was natural. It was a natural uh, medium for this type of storytelling because it, it's it's almost episodic in the way that they 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 compose the film. Um, and I thought that was I thought that was really interesting that um, Netflix is poising itself as a. Uh, it, <sighs> just a just a very different well it's an alternative to yeah the the traditional you know method for for going about making films so right. i guess in a, you know in, in a bubble you could view this film as potentially not existing in in a traditional studio world where you know they take a look at this thing and like it's going to be six movies in one yeah just make one, watch just that make pick which one you want to do make a movie about that right yeah and so then you know then and then you have netflix comes along it's just like Shit, yeah, we'll put anything on this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. For good and for, for bad. Uh, and uh, fortunately, this one happens to fall into the former category. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think overall it's a, it's exceptionally well made. Obviously, that's the Coen Brothers standard. It lives up to that um, <laughs> without a doubt. Um, but I, I think it's it's more than just exceptionally well made. I think it's definitely, it captures the spirit of the land, the cinematography, as you mentioned, spectacular, uh, the... The, the vast vistas. Um, the vast vistas. They cannot be denied. They and, cannot be denied. And they're 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 not only are they they are they period pieces, right? But the stories themselves, and this is what I was trying to say earlier, and I think I'm, I think I'm about to say it better. Um, they're they're still very relevant stories to today. You know what I mean? They're they're they take place way back when, but they're the characters are still relevant. And I like it when stories transcend periods like that. You know what I mean? They're not, it's not a story about necessarily, a, 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 it's not a story about the period that they're in. I mean, sure, it takes place in this period, but the characters are still, they're, they're, they're still here. You know what I mean? They're still, uh, it's still a relevant story to be told. And I think, yeah, I mean, each one almost kind of feels like a parable. Exactly. That's it, the word I'm looking you for. You know, there's, Bingo. there's, mm-hmm. there's something to be drawn out of each one that, and yeah, as you mentioned, in spite of the setting, still is very valid today. Exactly. Valid. What are we doing here? Very this is amazing. Valid. <laughs> uh, I think damn. I've used very a couple times, so that that might be cheating. Hot diggity dog. Hot <laughs> damn. Damn tootin'. Sure tootin'. <laughs> Uh, so yes, uh, I, I think uh, I think we've about covered it for non spoilers. Uh, it's definitely worth a watch. Most people have Netflix. Or someone in your family has Netflix. Give it a go. <laughs> That's it. So steal someone's you know account information, you know, or ask for it. You can borrow it. You don't have to steal it, uh, and uh, give it a go. Uh, let's do some spoilers for this. So as as I mentioned, this is going to be full spoilers um, for all of these shorts, but we are going to go one by one, and we're going to go sequentially because that seems to make the most sense to me. <laughs> uh, we're going to begin with the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, the short. Uh, titled The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, that is. It's a hell of a start to uh, to this film. One that um, draws you right in. You know, it's. I, I think this is, it's probably the most uh, gripping. Um, Sets the tone. Or, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's something that, I, I guess maybe you might be in or you might be out based on this. I, 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 I would disagree with you if you weren't feeling this, but I, I, I found myself pretty much in from the get-go. Sure, Bust, Buster Scruggs himself, he's the a misanthrope himself. <laughs> he's a very charismatic man. Uh, he's, you know, he's got some fancy words that he uses, <laughs> and uh, I, I could watch, I mean, maybe this, maybe the studio might have pushed for something like this, a traditional studio might have pushed for something this, like this. I could watch a two-hour film with just Buster Scruggs. Absolutely, the Adventures of Buster Scruggs. Fuck yeah! Just, just, just pure Buster Scruggs through and through. Um, I think, I think this for me is probably the only one of the six that would work. I think as a 
Uh, there's probably there's pro- I think the gal who got rattled could also work as more of an extended piece. I don't know that it would work as well, but I think this one could definitely work as an extended piece. Um, whereas I think the other ones are kind of very much designed uh, to be uh, shorter to kind of have. They wouldn't pack the same punch, I think, if they were drawn out. Right. Uh, whereas this one, this one feels like there's a whole prequel movie waiting in the wings for, for old Buster Scruggs. And I say a prequel movie because he meets an unfortunate end because uh, he can't be top dog forever, uh, as we all know. Um, but uh, Buster Scruggs, man, uh, this this first short here, I, 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 think, I think it's safe to say we both enjoyed this one quite a bit. Yeah? No, yeah, for sure. Uh, the songs and the humor it's very humorous surly um, joe the gambler <laughs> he that's will tim blake right never more that is tim blake nelson yes his days of stud and hold them they are done it was long about last april he stepped into this saloon but he never really took to anyone surly joe surly joe, surly joe. Oh, wherever he's gambling now, I don't know. He was slick, but I was slicker. He drew quick, but I was quicker. And the table stopped his ticker, Surly Joe. Yeehaw! All right, it's tough of that. It's very nice. I hope, very but nice. I, hope, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed a uh, little, little music there. Little tune. Little tune. So, yeah, the tunes here are, are, are very catchy. Surly Joe, of course, uh, is great. And, uh, it's the only one that's kind of musical-esque, for sure. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah and, no, and, sure. and and especially the whole scene within the saloon, you know, it's kind of, you know, he's got this elaborate routine, you know, on top of the bar and, you know, the the whole thing and everyone's just kind of slowly like, what the fuck's going on here? And then everyone's very much getting into it, which is, it's great tonal whiplash right after the, you know, he he, he uses a table plank to force a man to shoot himself in the face three, <laughs> yeah. se- three separate times, <laughs> yeah. which is incredible. And, uh, and, I, and traditional uh, Coen Brothers fashion. But it's I don't know, man. It's it's great. It's well, very and good. and that's something that's true of this whole thing. There's a lot of hyper violence throughout, and it's often shocking when it happens. Um, like I, I guess I didn't expect this one. I don't know. You know, he's he's Buster Scruggs is a very cheerful outlaw. You know, you know, yeah. it's, it's talking about how his his uh, his reputation is. Uh, you know, he's misunderstood. Um, but then you know, as he encounters uh, the various uh, people throughout his tale. Uh, they Fucks all meet very. <laughs> they all meet some very violent ends. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but it's 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 gr- it's great fun. Um, That's a fun one. Yeah, I, I think it's. I think it's got to be the most f- fun all of them all, and even though it ends with Old Buster Scruggs meeting you know a grisly end, it doesn't. You know, it's not like a dark depressing end i mean it ends with uh no. du- it, it, it literally ends with a duet uh, while he ascends to heaven uh, you know hoping that you know well, th- hopefully things are better up here you know yeah he does he puts his guns down man so it's peace it's nice it's a nice little end to the story it's good i like it i like it a lot actually i think yeah. the ending song is probably i like the ending song well i don't know that first song is pretty good too the intro song the, the, is really the, good is it cool water cool <laughs> yeah cool, cool. Clean cool. water. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Let me tell you, buddy, there's a faster gun. He doesn't even attempt to drive his horse. Yonder. Yeah. Drive his horse? Does it drive you? What do you do? Uh, you ride his horse. He doesn't even yeah, attempt to wait. He's riding the horse. You drive he doesn't attempt coach. to steer the horse. He's just playing his guitar. He's just, just playing the, his guitar. He's just yeah, playing his guitar, singing man. songs. Old Buster yeah. Scruggs, the misanthrope. <laughs> hey, but, you know... uh that's all I got on that one. That one's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's good. I mean, Buster Scruggs is a he's a very magnetic man, and uh, we, I think we much enjoyed uh, the exploits of uh, I think old Buster a, Scruggs. I think they did an excellent job on the placement of Buster Scruggs as far as the episode goes. If you're going to call it an episode, the story. Yeah, uh, uh, put short, that captivating episode. Yeah. Put that up front. Yeah. Capture everybody. Let them into the next one. Yep, the next one. Which is near Algodones, Al- starring uh, Algodones, James Franco, and uh, this one's about a about a cowboy robbing a bank. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, the 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 misadventures that follow. Um, I like this one uh, pretty well too. I mean, I'm going to say that about all of them. I like them all pretty well. So, um, 
there's 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 some eclectic things that happen in this with uh, with pant shot pant shot you know yeah the, the, yeah, the, the bank teller is, is old man. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Root is uh, is fantastic here he's 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 almost channeling a little Milton from Office Space but in like a in like an old West setting which is <laughs> fantastic uh, I, I greatly enjoyed that um, but I I, I don't, you know the, I, I think this one is probably a little bit more indicative of the types of shorts that, that most of these resemble, you know, where it's just like, this is a fucking crazy ass world. And like this shit just happens all the time. Like that's kind of the impression I got from this one is just like, <laughs> I, I, I think in terms of like the parable piece of it, you know, it's just like, well, he, you know, he, he, he eventually, the cowboy eventually meets his end, even though it wasn't necessarily, um, for the bank robbery and obviously as it turns out it's for the was it the cattle uh that that are stolen or whatever something like right. that um so yeah what you th- what you think about this one near algodonis uh i didn't get a whole lot from this one um i'm not gonna it, it's not it's not i don't know i think it's a i think it's fun i think it's funny um i think this is probably this one's probably the shortest of them right I yeah, I think you're right. I do believe it's the shortest. Yeah. Um and I think I think I think it's probably the most shallow. Um but I do I, I did the, the 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 whole sequence there where he robbed the bank and he's out there hiding behind the was he hiding behind a stagecoach or a tree? I can't remember. Um uh, I think it's tree, but I could be wrong. Yeah, and then the, the, the fucking bank teller runs out dressed up in pans. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was, was pretty awesome. Pretty, was I mean, well, good. it was actually he had the the elaborate like shotgun set up behind the uh, behind the the, the yeah. counter, which was which was pretty impressive too. I think that I think maybe the reason this one doesn't have as much maybe lasting impact as some of the others is our protagonist is pretty much a passive actor in everything. Um, you know, it's basically just him like really the only action he takes is kind of robbing the bank and they're attempting right. to rob the bank in the beginning. And then after that, it's, you know, he's, he's kind of strung up with the noose. And then there's just this wild sequence, sequence of events that effectively, you know, happen around him. And then he just kind of same goes end. with this and then, yeah, you know, and then, it, you know, it, it, it all kind of leads back to that ending. So, yeah, I, I, again, as I mentioned, I enjoyed this one, but I, I would, I would agree. And maybe, part of that could be offered to the fact that it is one of the shortest ones that it doesn't have as much opportunity to, you know, really, ha- you know, I-, I guess have that same oomph that, that some of the other ones kind of have, right. I would say. Right. But, uh, eh, you can't go wrong. It's good. It's good. It's a good one. Um, I don't have too many other thoughts on it, I guess, as a result. So I don't <laughs> think if you, have, if, you, if you have nothing else to add, I, I guess we can move on as well. Yeah, no, let's move on. Keep on, keep on going. All right, so the third is called Meal Ticket. Uh, this is the Liam Neeson one. And <laughs> this one's fucked up. <laughs> this one is, yeah, this one's... I think this is the darkest one, I would say, of all of them. Uh, by far, uh, definitely. Which I think that there are parts in, like, The Gal Who Got Rattled and The Mortal Rains that are pretty dark, but I think overall this is. got Well, the be problem the is, one. is that the... the... <sighs> Yeah, the girl who got rattled was a. I mean, it's an interesting story, and that. But the, I don't want to jump ahead. The, the mortal engine, the, the mortal engines. Jesus Christ, mortal <laughs> re- <laughs> it was great. I didn't see it, but I'm sure it was great. Mortal remains. It ends on a. I. They just feel like uh, there's something to be had about those things. This one just feels like a. You're watching a piece of shit the entire time. It's just a yeah. giant piece of shit the entire time. Yeah, it's it's there's there's no glimmer of like <laughs> happiness or hope it's just shit from 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 the get-go and it and it just gets worse That's you it. know effectively um did you know that uh uh harrison he's he's the uh he's the artist in this okay uh, he's he's portrayed by the actor that played uh Dudley Dursley in the Harry Potter films. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. I guess I could see it now that I'm. Not- I, I recognize him, but I couldn't place him. Uh, he's he's a little slimmer and missing a few limbs, obviously, in this one. Um, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. Good for him. I think he's mostly done stage work um, outside of Harry Potter in this. But no, he's uh, doing stage work in this one too, I guess. Right? Technically, yeah, I guess suppose that's uh, quite fitting, indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's good. Liam Neeson's good. There's the there's the smile at the end that's jumping ahead a little bit, but just the the smile he gives at the end is. It's twisted. 
it's pretty twisted it's pretty pretty horrifying yeah but in general i think that this one um yeah it's 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 not a fun watch but it's a compelling watch as well it you know, is it, it's it, yeah you can't look it, away you, you kind of you you get a sense i don't know it's it, you know i think it's interesting the way that it starts and you don't really get a great sense of, I think, the relationship between the impresario and the artist. You know, it seems like maybe father and son. Um, and then the more it goes on, it's just like, oh, no, that's just how he makes his money. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, um, they don't ever speak to each other, do they? In the in the entirety of the short? Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think they do. You know, and, and so, you know, obviously... Uh, you know the impresario is feeding him and you know traveling around and you know putting on a, an act with him but it doesn't really seem like <laughs> it doesn't really seem like the the artist has much of a choice in this you no, know well, no. obviously uh-uh. by necessity in terms that you know he's especially given the time period very restricted in his ability to do anything um, physically but um, I think this yeah, one this one know. has a lot of um because they're the they're, he's inter- he's an entertainer, you know. Uh, I think it's got a lot to. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the, what, what was your what's your what's your takeaway on this one? What's your parable? Well, I think I think my takeaway in general, you know, by the by by the end of the story where, you know, he he out out with the old and with the new. You know, the it, basically it's, it's whatever I, the I think, masses are eating. I'm going to feed you whatever the masses exactly. want. Exactly, and I think that you look at it in the sense of he's doing Shakespeare and the Gettysburg Address, and then the people are like, "That chicken can do math," you know. Like there's 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 a there's a big distinction between those kinds of things. Are these? Would and, you say that these are your your quote unquote superhero movies? Not to say that superhero movies uh, are not yeah, poorly I, made. I, I think you you could frame it as such. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I think it's just, yeah, it's definitely a general commentary about, like... Spectacle? You know, the... Spec- eh, somewhat spectacle. Um, but I think it's more just the shallow nature of the the entertainment business in general. I think that's definitely true of Hollywood. And if you wanted to extend that um, to, you know, your blockbuster-type films, your superhero-type films, I, I, I think that could probably be part of it. I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, obviously... I like superhero films. I like superhero so, films too. I'm so, like so I'm part of the masses <laughs> that that likes the chicken counting too. If you wanted to frame it as such, but uh, I think you could you could certainly read it as that. I think it's, I, I think maybe more broadly you could just read it as you just follow the next big thing. It's true. You know, and you know, and it, then it's if, very much just an out with the old and with the new type thing. And, and if you're not in with the new, you get dumped in a fucking river. And I, I think that, <laughs> I think maybe the the takeaway is that is probably short sighted. You know, we don't really see. You know, there's not like a moment at the end where like the chicken's just a chicken. You know, it, it, there's nothing like that. But we could probably logically assume that. You know, is is that chicken really gonna, you know? But at the end of the day, doesn't make matter. him that much money? Maybe, uh, or it could just it could be He's an endless gonna cycle find, where he'll, yeah he'll find the, something the, else. The, the, you know, the the chicken works its magic for a while i mean yeah as we saw in the beginning he had a pretty decent crowd with uh with harrison and by the end no one was paying up for it you know the same might be true with chicken and then it's the next thing and you know given given the time um you could get into some pretty uh tasteless things but um right it doesn't quite reach that far um it kind of just leaves you you know with uh anyway it, it, you know it, it it's not a thing that totally I mean, it, it does spell it out for you, but you don't actually physically see him like take him and drop him into the river. But uh, we know and I think that's uh, I think that's one of the I think this one has probably one of the best little quotes in the beginning. I can't remember what the quote was, um, but all of the uh, all of the stories have a little have a little blurb there before they dive into the story while it's flipping through the book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I can't remember what the quote was, but I remember really enjoying it. And then once I saw it, I was it clicked. Uh, the foreshadowing in the quote it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I I actually I enjoyed that you could read part of the the story and and almost read kind of the tail end of the story with the the you know the framing device of the book throughout. We didn't really talk about that at all. Um, 
I thought that was awesome. It's pretty. It almost great. made me want to. Like, I kind of want to read uh, like a novelization of these shorts. I think that would be interesting to see it because the transition is really interesting because you get a little bit more. I think out of. I think as is the case with pretty much any adaptation of written word, there's a little bit more detail. There's a little bit more uh, sometimes omniscience that you can put into a novel that you don't quite get in a film medium, but at the same time, the film medium off, uh, obviously offers its own advantages in a different way. But it, I don't really know that you, not within the context of a you know film itself, you rarely ever see the written word kind of literally translated like that in front of your eyes. I think that's actually really cool. It is but, cool. Uh, as, as I was reading, you know, I found myself like, not just like, oh, there's the title of it and moving on. I was just like, I want to read the first page of this shit. And then once I finished reading the first page, I'm like, I don't know, I kind of actually just wanted to read the rest of it and then I'll watch the thing, you know? It was like, oh, I mean, all right, obviously I don't have a choice, but I would be curious to to know. I mean, obviously there's a script for it, but I would be curious to know if it was written in that type of prose um, at any point for all of these. Because I, I, That's pretty I, would be, I would be interested to, to read it in that format just to see how it plays, you know? I would think it would play differently. It's a different medium, you know? It has to, mm-hmm. so. Um, yeah, uh, you want to move on? Uh, I wanted to make note. Um, okay. Last time, uh, the the a, a lot of these westerns, they uh, with the exception of, I want to say, Mortal Engines. Most of the color palettes are orange. Um, this one. Wait, had, what? What Mortal Engines? No, color did palette? I say it again? Did I say it again? Mortal yeah, Remains. Shit. <laughs> okay. Mortal Remains. <laughs> um, it could, could be the the Mortal Instruments, City of Bones. So many mortal things. <laughs> Um, I think most of the color palettes in these are like orange and orange and they're mostly bright. Um, Mm -hmm. but meal ticket, even the fire, even the fire was fucking blue in this. I don't Mm. know if you noticed that or not. It was gray and blue. Uh, and I noticed that last night. Uh, and I thought that was a, uh, I thought that was a really interesting take. I thought it was pretty, I don't know. I like that. I like that attention to detail and colors and stuff and how it tells a story. I think that's probably one of my favorite things about film. But anyways, going on to the next one. Yeah, do you want to you want to set us up on this one, All Gold Canyon? All Gold Canyon. Um this one is about a elderly gentleman uh and he is he's uh he's looking for fortune. Uh, and he goes out to a very beautiful wide stretching pasture full of nature. And he goes out, and he's by himself, and he starts digging. He's looking for Mr. Pocket. Mr. And, Pocket! <laughs> yeah, Mr. Pocket. I'm going to find you, Mr. Pocket. And he's just, he's very, he, at one point he climbs a tree, and he gets that, he looks uh, at the owl eggs. I think it's an owl. And, you know, he's going to take all the eggs, but now nah, I'll leave, I'll just, I'll just take one for myself. And he goes down, he only takes one egg, and he goes down there, and He's in pursuit of the goddamn American dream. That's what he's in pursuit of. And through hard work and perseverance, he finds it. And then, when he finds it, that shady motherfucker shoots him in the back. But then, he gets him back and he's able to, he he climbs himself out of that hole and fixes himself up and and goes and and he, he, he checks into Mr. Pocket. And I really like this story. I really like this story. What do you think about this one? I think this one has the best sound. I think this one's got the best score too. I'm going to go out and say it. This one's got the okay. best. Okay. Uh, I don't I like I don't it remember enough of the individual uh, pieces of score for each individual segment to to divide them up. So I I, I wouldn't be able to I understand. To I've listened agree to the score or quite a bit for comment. a couple months. <laughs> I've listened Yeah, I've listened to it a little bit over the past week or so, I would say. Um, but not enough again to, to make that determination of like, oh, this was from that short. So I couldn't, I couldn't delineate, uh, like that. I thought this was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. It's nice because it's a pretty vastly different setting, a vastly different Vista, uh, than, than we've seen in some of the other ones, the ones prior to it. And I, I think the ones that are, uh, subsequent to it as well. You know, this is easily the most green that we see in this film. Right. And I think it also takes a much more uplifting tone than some of the other ones do. Now, obviously, there's the moment in the middle where things are looking pretty dire um, for uh, 
for our prospector and uh, Mr. Pocket. Um, but by the end, you know, it's like you said, you know, uh, through through sheer will, through his labor, through uh, his perseverance, God damn it, he's going to achieve the American dream. And, uh, you know, he's going to mine that gold. And uh, I, I, I really enjoyed this one on the whole. Um, like I said, visually, I, I, it was absolutely captivating. It was stunning. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was beautiful. You know, for, you know, even just the beginning with the way it's set up, you know, you see the nature um, kind of, you know, at, at just doing its thing, basically. You know, mm-hmm. you see the deer and it's just kind of doing its thing. And then, then the prospector comes along, puts all these holes in it. Even by, and by the end, you kind of return, you know, you kind of close the loop there. And all the animals the deer, come back. Right? They come back and they're like, the fuck happened here? You know, there's a little <laughs> bit of that. Um, and, it, you know, that's, that's pretty on point in and of itself. Um, but I, I enjoy just the actual content of the story as well. Um, Tom Waits is fucking fantastic as as the outstanding here outstanding and he yes. has to basically command this entire short he carries by it by himself right exactly mm-hmm. there is one other character here but i don't remember i don't think he has any lines either if i'm not mistaken you know uh and and so it's literally at the hands of one tom waits to to basically make this thing work by himself well, and, and you do he, have he, other characters, but they don't say anything. Like you said, Mr. Pocket is a character in of nature. Mr. Pocket, yeah, is, and, and maybe maybe the, maybe the owl. If you wanted to put the owl as a character, right? But you know, it, he, in the way that this is structured, um, he's a very um, loud character. You know, he he, he thinks out loud. Um, well, he, he does, he says, but at the same time, he's talking to the other character. Right? He's talking to nature. He's talking to Mr. Pocket. He's talking to the river. Right. He's talking to but, the animals. But my, my, my point is that it, it is literally expressed through dialogue. You know, yeah. the, the, mm-hmm. you know I, I agree with you in the sense that, yes, the, the, the characters in this aren't what we traditionally think of characters in the sense that, yes, they're not other people for the most part. Um, but I, I just mean in the sense that it's up to the actor to deliver the dialogue to convince us, you know, Right, it's, it's the castaway thing of Tom Hanks and Wilson. You got to believe that Wilson is a character. We know that Wilson's a volleyball with a fucking bloody palm print on it. We know that, but God damn it, if 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 Wilson is not a character, we don't cry when Wilson gets lost at sea. Correct. You know what I mean? That's right. this. That's this, and and kind of a, a nutshell. You don't feel so, captive. You don't feel that sense of pride and excitement when he finds Mister Pocket. Exactly, and so, that's how. And just so you know, if you listen to the score again. You can always tell. Is there, when, is there a moment when he finds Mr. Pocket? Well, the 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 range in the music, the dynamic in the music, um, everything just get everything swells. Um, you can always tell when you get into this this. I, I guess you call it episodes or whatever. If when you get to this short, um, everything's sweeping, and 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 then when you find Mr. Pocket, everything comes to a crescendo and it all swells up. And it's oh, it's so good, it's so fucking good. I like it a lot. Well, sorry, I like yeah, it that's a that. lot too. That's that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 great. Um, this is, yeah, this is really it's a it's really a good really one. good work. Yeah, it's a really good one. Um, any other thoughts on it? Nope, that's all I got. It's really it's it's. I think that one's got the. I think I don't know if it's the most. I I think it's probably one of the most apparent parables. Um. But it's really touching. I think the character is very uh, authentic and and heartfelt. And I don't know, he, he the actor is what Tom Waits. You said, yeah, uh, yeah. He's who's traditionally known as a singer. Okay, well, he did an excellent job in this. And um, I don't know, it's 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 really good. What's the next one? What are we on next? The next one is the girl who got rattled. Okay. Yeah, I think this might be the longest one. I could be wrong on that. No, I think I I don't think you're wrong. I think it's probably the longest. It definitely feels like the most uh involved, the most extensive of them. Um but I like this one pretty well too. Uh do you want to set this one up? You want me to you want me to give it a little bit of context? I'll catch the next one. All right. I'll let you catch the next one. Yeah, so this one, you know, it's uh it's Alice Longabow and uh 
her brother who take a journey uh, on the wagon train to Oregon. Her brother ends up passing away very sadly. And basically she's stuck in this situation where she doesn't have any money and she's, uh, you know, she owes money basically. So it's kind of like, well, what do I do here? And, uh, in comes in uh, cowboy, Mr. Billy Knapp, who offers, you know, they, they kind of strike up this, um, he's one of the leaders on the caravan, right? Yes. Right. And, um, you know, he, you know, they kind of bond a little bit and then he offers, uh, to, 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 you know, to, to marry her and basically assume the debts that she owes and, uh, settle with her in Oregon. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I mean, that's really, I would say probably 75% of this is just kind of the slow journey on the wagon, uh, over to Oregon and just kind of the building of that relationship. But, um, things cannot be, uh, as uplifting as they were in all gold Canyon, at least by the end. Uh, this one has a pretty dark ending, uh, where, you know, uh, Alice Longabaugh goes, goes off on her own. Uh, we got, she, she finds president Pierce, the dog, of course, you can't forget about president Pierce. And, uh, to get the, she's, she's with the other kind of leader of the, the wagon train and, um, uh, some, uh, native Americans come in and, uh, she receives these explicit instructions that, uh, you know, if, if the, the, you know, the guy protecting her, you know, basically gets killed, then you shoot she's yourself. got a pistol. Now you shoot yourself in the head because if you don't, you're going to be left to a fate far worse than that. And, uh, yeah. Um, he gets knocked in the noggin and she shoots herself. Well, he turned out he was faking and yeah. And he came over and well, she was dead. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so the moral of the hell, story hell of an is ending. don't deal in absolutes because generally it's not a good thing. That's how that's my parable well, I walked away with. What'd you walk away with on that? As we know, only a Sith deals in absolutes. <laughs> yeah. So I think that I think that you're on the right track there. <laughs> uh, maybe... Did I did I deal on an absolute by saying that? It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Uh, uh, um, Takeaway. Yeah. I think that's probably more or less. You know, the the, the right approach. You know, maybe maybe have a little nuance uh, if you can. Um, but I really enjoyed this one. You know, I don't. Maybe if I didn't totally uh, have the the greatest takeaway from it, I, I felt like the characters in this one, I I I, I quite enjoyed. I think they're probably the more the, the most fleshed out, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, and I, and maybe again that might be the virtue of just the length of this, where you know, compared to Nier Agaldones, where it's the shortest one, you have the less you know the least amount of time invested in any one. This one, I think, has the most of time uh, invested in any of these characters. But I, I found myself uh, enjoying the the dynamic between all the characters. I I I really enjoyed the actor that played Billy Knapp. I'm not familiar with him, but I found him to be uh, pretty pretty charismatic. I enjoyed uh, the old man in this one. the 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 the, 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 yeah, the other the, the other guy one. that yeah. stands well, the the guy that gets knocked in the head. Yeah, I, I enjoyed his. I also enjoyed his dynamic where, um, you know, Billy Knapp's like, "Well, I think I'm gonna get married, sir," and he's like, "Well, uh, I, I gotta deal with my saddle." So, <laughs> I I, <laughs> I like they were sitting there eating beans or whatever they were doing. They were eating dinner. And mm-hmm. they were talking about the price that somebody was going to pay or whatever. And uh, he's <laughs> there. The nap and the girl are having a conversation, and he's over there eating his beans. And that's a high price. That's just a that's just a high price. It's a high price. Mm, high price. <laughs> this one to me uh, kind of reminded me the most of Red Dead. I would say, like it, it just. Well, yeah. I think visually, a, yeah. in terms of just like it's just like people living in this world just having conversations and stuff like that and this one to me felt some some, i think some of them i think the mortal remains when we get there definitely feels a little bit more um hyper realized in some ways where it's kind of uh, ballad of buster scruggs i think is also another one where the 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 written word as it's you know the 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 spoken word i guess it, it feels very intentionally kind of fancy 
Uh, this one feels a little bit more low key, I think, in terms of the dialogue. It's still very strong, but it, it's less it's less concerned with being eloquent, and you know, it's it's less. Um, I'm not a devious man by nature, but when you're unarmed, your taxes might gonna be downright Archimedean. Archimedean. You know, <laughs> Archimedean. Like that. That to me is like. That's a fucking word, man. Archimedean. That's a fucking. Well, just that whole that whole sentence there is a fucking sentence, man. <laughs> and, and I feel like the the gal who got rattled is is a little bit more. Uh, I think it's a little bit more straightforward in its approach. Um, a little bit more maybe down to earth, I guess, in its approach. Sure. Um, but I, I enjoy I enjoy both styles. I enjoy the you know the Buster Scruggs waxing philosophical over in the corner, but I also enjoy uh, maybe this more reserved approach um, from the gal who got yeah, rattled. And the girl know, who got rattled more... is a very real. It feels like a very real experience. Yeah, the, I think it's maybe more of a naturalistic right. type uh, impression that that it's giving you. But that, and, and again, you know, to, to, to bring it back maybe more to the broad strokes that we talked about, I think that's the beauty of this film is that you've get, you know, you get both of those approaches. Mm-hmm. They're both done really well. So, you know, bonus points there. Um, but there's a little bit of something for everyone. So maybe you like more traditional type storytelling. Gal who got rattled might be more for you. Uh, maybe you don't like sad endings, in which case, all Gold Canyon might be more for you. Uh, maybe the other five, not so much. Those, those, no, not not really <laughs> great endings for anyone else there. Yeah, maybe, maybe Buster Scruggs, you could probably throw him a bone because it's not, it's a it's somewhat of a bittersweet ending, I guess, if you wanted to frame it as such. So, um, but you know, uh, I, I I liked this one a lot. You know, this one to me felt, I don't know, like I I, I guess I kind of said it before, um, somewhat earlier in the episode. Like this to me felt like it could have been. Like this is another one I think that definitely could have been its own movie. This is like a true you know? grit, right? Yeah, like you could have made a full length version of this with a you know a, a real downer of an ending for sure. Um, you know, if you have an extra hour and a half of investment with some of these characters, you know, a little bit more extension, maybe you know, yeah, no, like the beginning sequence with with uh, Alice and her family, you could definitely have more time spent in that setting before they set out on the journey. Like there, there's a full version of this. I think that that still works on its own but mm-hmm. it's a testament it's, to it's the real brothers simple, that, it's a real simple thing yeah. too it's a it's it's a group of people traveling west it's what they're doing you know what i mean and 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 it's about these particular people and and what's going on and uh i, I don't know it's a it's a very real story i mean if you if you would have told me that there was record of this happening i would i don't know I'd probably believe it you know it's uh well, it's very maybe authentic it did. Maybe it did. It's true. Yeah, Maybe. actually, I just I just saw it did. What? Yeah, I just I was just looking at the Wikipedia page. It says that it's based off of a true story. No, no shit. You're shitting me. No way. I am shitting you, but I was just gonna see if you're gonna buy it. Oh, you said okay. you, you said you would buy it, so I was curious to see if you if you're true to your word. Yeah, well, the, the, your timing would have, your timing made me think you were shitting me. Yeah, well, I guess I gotta <laughs> work on that. Yeah. But it's a good one. It is a good one. It's a good I one. agree. It is a good one. I agree. Uh, shall we go on to the last one then? The last one. The Mortal Engines. No, it's not the Mortal Engines, you bastard. <laughs> the Mortal Remains. <laughs> the Mortal Remains. That's the one. <laughs> uh, this one's pretty simple, too. Um, I I really enjoyed this though? one. Yeah, well, <sighs> I think, it, well, I mean, the setting's very simple. It all takes place in a stagecoach. Okay, I agree with that. Um, the uh, it's definitely a character-driven uh, piece. Um, you have uh, you have two gentlemen sitting uh, across from three other people in a stagecoach, um, and uh, and it appears to be um, at least the way I took away from it. What I took away from it, the whole the whole short is is people reflecting on um the two different kinds of people there are in the world um you know one person says that um the differences between people are there's there's good people there's bad people um another person says that uh there's the the difference between people is the, the there's the living and then there's the dead um the other what help me help me think of these can you help me recall all these do you know do you know all of them? Um, what was the Frenchman? He he was talking you know, about the love, but I don't know if that was 
um, where he went with his his two kinds of people in the world. Let me see here. He was talking about charismatic people and how they view charismatic people. I think. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna have to cheat. Lorraine's. Um. Well, I think maybe we should talk about was it the trapper? He says that all people are like ferrets. He does say all people are like ferrets. Um. Says the lady who was religious and around uh, the preacher husband is offended by the trapper's life of sin. The Frenchman argues that nature, the nature of love with the lady who has momentary health scare. Uh, uh, shorts where no one dies. Blah 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 blah. Maybe I can't get them all. I don't know. Um, but it's it's just a group of people traveling in a stagecoach to a destination, uh, and reflecting on essentially what is life. Uh, is what it is. And uh, I enjoyed this one a whole lot. There's actually one particular image that I actually it kind of blew my mind a little bit. It's the one where he pops his head out the out the stagecoach, and he can see the he can see the guy driving the stagecoach with the whip. You know, what I'm yeah, talking? yeah, mm-hmm. th- that kind of blew my mind a little bit. I was kind of like, oh my god, that's fucking cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. Would you would you take from this one? Um, well. You may disagree with me, but I feel like there's much more to this one than just five people on a stagecoach. Elaborate. I, I read this as the three uh, on the same side were dead and transitioning into... No, there's no uh, doubt about that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, you haven't mentioned anything about that. That's no, and then the, and then, just... then they get to where they're going, and they open the staircase. The one lady was going to see her husband, who had who presumably has died already, uh, and he's waiting for her. Um, and then when they open up the doors, and then you have the stairway to heaven and stuff. It's uh... okay. All right. I I just I was like, am I? I don't think I'm going out on a limb on saying anything like along those lines. No, I, no, they were all dying. I felt the, like the, that the people. Were... I didn't think they were burying the lead at all with this one. I, I at least I didn't feel. No, it was very um, simple. I think it was very evident on what they were trying to do. Um, I enjoyed the reflections of the people, though. Yeah, yeah one okay. lady who was. I think that's. I think that's. The, it's almost the, like they're like they're like justifying their life in a way. Like exactly. You know, this is, yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with um, that. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I just was just like, oh, that seems like a very very surface level reading of this. So no, right, and we, the, we are in fact on the same page. Yeah, which is we, good. And then I I really enjoyed the um, not the one who, <sighs> which one sank first? Was it Gleason who sank um, first? No, it was the uh, it was the Englishman that that. Sing for he was the one like when they when they're like literally when the short starts he's he's singing and then the Irishman sings later in the in the short. I enjoyed the Englishman's reflection at the end where it's kind of creepy a little bit. Yeah, he's talking about like he likes he, like he kind of like enjoys like seeing them like pass into the other realize what's happening when they when yeah. they realize what what's going on. Um, and if they figure it out or not, or if they figure out how they live their life and this and that. I I'd like to, I see some words on the, the internet page that I'm looking at. Negotiate the passage and, and try to make sense of it is, is what I have quoted yes. here. So um, I enjoyed this short story a lot as well. Um, yeah, I thought this was a, a another good one. It's one what that you surprise. can... surprise. It's you, another good one. You can... I think there's some that are just rewatchable. Um. I, at least I don't know. I I could rewatch a couple of these more so than I could rewatch other. I'm not going to go rewatch Mill Ticket. I have no desire to rewatch Mill Ticket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, it's just a little 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 too dark and depressing for you. Yeah, or? a little too. Yeah, yeah. Well, it just you know like there's I don't know, this one like the 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 mortal remains. It just it's seems also like somewhat repetitive too. Um, it is Mill Ticket. You know, there's a lot of you know repeating by the, the same people. shit. You know, not that that not that that's bad. That's the way they chose to tell the story, and I can I understand it. But like, it just seems like um, the mortal remains and some of these other ones you can kind of rewatch and just pull more out of it every time you watch it. Um, whereas I think some of these uh, some of the other ones are not that way. Um, yeah. But I really enjoyed uh, the mortal remains. I think it's more of a character piece, um, and I think that. Uh, I think that the people in the stagecoach are very, very, very interesting. The way, I don't know, just the way they were written. Um, but that's my take on it. And then there's that one shot of him whipping that horse, and I thought that was fucking really cool. I wish I could get a picture of that. 
but I don't think I'll be able to find it. Yeah, well, I, I'm still trying to find a... Uh, I mean, I haven't looked in a while, but I'm trying to find a good screen cap of the the flight of the Valkyries from Thor Ragnarok. I need yeah, a, that need one's a canvas a... of it, my friend. So <laughs> you can get you can get your canvas. I'll get my canvas. We'll both be be happy campers. You know what I mean? Right. Um. All right. Well, I think that is it for uh, all of the shorts and, and effect that is the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Um. Before we uh, conclude this episode, I, I did want to. Uh, run through our personal rankings of each short. Um, Because I'm curious. I find that we have generally similar tastes on things. Um, You know, we tend to like the same movies for the most part, sometimes to varying degrees, Uh, but we rarely disagree. But I feel like, I almost think that maybe some of these shorts could, I don't know, they might appeal to us in different ways. So I'm I'm very curious to see how we feel right. on these so we'll run uh we'll run uh from six to one so we'll we'll go one at a time and uh if you're if you're ready we'll we'll start at number six uh what was your, all right what was your least favorite shall we say um near uh, algodones it's my least favorite well interestingly enough that is also my least favorite so we're on the same page so far now to be clear yes it's not bad yes very entertaining it's a very entertaining thing I just think that some of these other uh, some of these other shorts have a lot more have a lot more to be digested. That's what I think. I think there's more to, there's more meat on the bone if we're going to speak Western talk here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, more, I think there's my more, there's more meat on that bone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it, uh, <laughs> yeah. The, some 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 are a little bit more tootin' than the other ones. You know mm, what I mean? A little bit more tootin'. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think that's think that's how they spoke back in the day, if I if I do recall correctly. <laughs> Uh yeah I, I yeah it's it's absolutely worth mentioning for the umpteenth time these are all really good there's nothing bad here um it all comes down to personal preference so far our personal preferences happen to align um one end uh but um there for me at least in terms of my my rankings it's it's somewhat a blend of objective and subjective in the sense that like some of these are going to appeal to people differently, as I mentioned. So I ranked it in terms of how it appealed to me, but I also kind of added a qualification for, well, maybe this wasn't 100% my shit, but it was really good from this standpoint, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I kind of would, you know, try to try to weigh both standards and in making my rankings. Um, so I agree with you. Number six, you know, near Algodonis, it's, it's very good on its own. Um, but in the scheme of things, it you know something's got to be last, and I, I think that's the one that yeah definitely. Um, it's the shortest. The, the other the, the other ones stick with you. I think a lot of these I I've thought about in the days since. That's one that kind of you know it's in in one ear out the other for me. Right. You know, in, in terms of the impact of it. So number six is a fair ranking for it. Number five, I will uh, we'll, we'll we'll alternate here. How about that? Number okay. five, I have meal ticket. Oh my God! We're the same. Oh, hmm. I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna be fucking impressed if we manage to have literally all six exactly the same. That would actually. I don't. I don't. I, don't know. I, don't, I think. I think we'll start to deviate in number four. I yeah. Think we're deviate yeah. In number I, four. I, I, I would be. I would be surprised. Now, um, so go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah. No. I. I mean. I. I like meal ticket. Um. But it is. It is definitely a uh, dark and depressing experience. Um, and I think that what holds this back for me, and I think we we kind of already talked about it, it doesn't have it has lasting impact in terms of like the content matter of just like fuck that was dark. But beyond that, I don't think it has like the rewatchability. Like I kind of like the, there's there's no joy to be found. Like the other ones, you can have some joy to be found, even if it ends in tragedy. Like there's still something there to to, to pull out of it. Of like, ah, uh, you know, I enjoyed the range of emotions. This is just like. Just Downbeat, cold, beat through time. and through and cold, literally in the color palette as you talked about, and it's just like, damn, oof. it's a it's a rough it's a rough go of it. Um, but it's you know, you know, if you look at it in a bubble, exceptionally well acted, you know, and it's a you know it's a cautionary tale too, and um, I, I enjoy it from that standpoint. So um, yeah, I, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed the 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 guy telling his uh, acting on in, on on his chair. I think that was probably the high point for me in the entire thing. In Dudley entire Dursley, short. man, yeah, just telling the stories. Uh, I thought I thought he was thought he was pretty good at telling them. 
Oh, but yeah, it's just cold and it's, it's def- I think it's, mm, I, don't, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's the slowest, but um, it's, def- well, I, I, I think it's, it is, it's one of the slowest it, for sure. It, it, it treads a lot of the same ground over and over again. And so I, I don't think that helps its pacing. No. Nothing else. Yeah. The, the, that's a good, uh, that's a good thing to draw on is the pacing. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's number five. <laughs> it's number five it's number five for a reason number four what you got number four uh number four i have the girl that who got rattled that's what i've got what do you got for number four i have the gal who got rattled do you really number four yeah holy shit <laughs> i uh, thought we were gonna deviate right. <laughs> uh okay interesting yeah um I, I i did admittedly uh, i'm jumping ahead a little bit uh of you i i apologize for that not really, uh, but um, I, I, I I struggled once I got to this part because I think that there are, again, you know, when I was trying to do that balancing act of like objective, subjective, I, I like this one um, pretty well uh, because I felt invested in all these characters, but I felt like the other ones had a little bit more, you know, just there was something more satisfying in them overall. Well, I think... I think the remaining three are a little bit more just they're just a little bit more stylish uh and they're they're maybe that's what it is they're just they're not that there's anything wrong with this I think that number I think that the girl who got rattled would would greatly benefit from a full length film uh I think they just it was it was the longest and you had the most investment in everything but at the same time it's still a short and and it just I don't know, and it, it and the way that it's structured, it's structured like a a realized thing, you know. Um, but at the same time, it's not. It's not a realized thing. It's it's just it's slightly longer than the other ones, but with less it, it, with less uh, panache. If you're gonna say panache, is that is that a thing to say? Is panache a word? Sure. Um, I think so. Yeah, it's just less stylish. It's just a it's a it's a very authentic story. It's very good. Characters are very realized and believable, and uh, they're likable. But the the remaining three films have um, they're they're I think they're very well they're very well suited to the format uh, that they're in, and I think that uh, they're I think they're vastly more entertaining. Um, and I don't know. I just think there's just, there's more, there's more quote unquote, not to, I don't know, not to kick a dead dog, but there's more meat on that bone. You know what I'm saying? That's what I got. I do know what you're saying. <laughs> well then, uh, let's move on to number three. I have the mortal remains at number three. Number three is the same for me. <laughs> <laughs> What's even happening here? Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, I really enjoyed yeah, number I, three. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. So, I this I, I actually just watched this one yesterday, and I think if I had ranked these yesterday, I think I would have had it lower. Um, but it's one of the you know I, there's recency bias, I suppose, if you want to frame it as such. Uh, but I have found myself and kind of you know thinking about this as we're, you know, preparing to talk about it and as we're actually talking about it, I'm kind of just like, yeah, no, you know, there's a little bit more to this one, I think, than I got out of it. Like, initially, like, right when I finished watching it, I was just like, oh, okay. Cool. There's a lot to dwell you know? on this one, for sure. You know, so I, I kind of just turned it off thinking, like, hmm, I like the other ones better. And then I, you know, I sat and thought on this one a little bit more, and I'm like, no, you know, I think there is a lot of quality content in it. Um, the interactions with the characters is all fantastic. The dialogue is all snappy uh it's interesting and you know as you mentioned just kind of the, the the conversations and the where the conversations go um i think it's interesting to to deal with that by itself but then you know as we talked about kind of the greater point of it of what is what is really happening here you know as we talked about i was just like oh fuck that's it's pretty clever i enjoyed that like I, this one i think along with ballad of buster scruggs is a little the other ones are more or less designed to be um, true to life. Whereas this one is just like, 
you know, it's just, there's a supernatural aspect to it, mm-hmm. you know, and Buster Scruggs has, you know, literally him ascending to heaven with his little wings flapping out of his back, you know, <laughs> like there's a, like a little visual there of like, this is goofy as fuck, but it's really enjoyable. This is kind of somewhat the same principle in the sense that there's this dark undercurrent to it, the supernatural undercurrent to it. I'm just like, that's really cool. You know, and, and I think when I first watched it, I didn't, I didn't pull that out of it immediately. I was just like, I think that's what's going on here. I think and by I the end, you like, probably did, though, for sure. By the end, you yeah, did. Yeah, like, definitely. And, and a lot of it with, especially the Frenchman at the end, look, looking around like, oh, shit. You know, like, there was a, I was just like, okay, yeah, all right. And, and the more I sat on it and, and then put that, you know, context with the, the entirety of the conversations that led up to that realization, I was just like, this is pretty good. Like, I think this is one that I didn't, I didn't rewatch it, but I think if I did, I would pull more things out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, so it's a, it's a fun thing to watch, but I like the two ahead of it better. So that's why it's number three. I agree with you. Number two for number two. I have the ballad of Buster Scruggs. What's your number two? Dude, this is ridiculous. Are we the same six for six? We're six for six, man. <laughs> I have, Dude, how's the how the fuck, man? That's for, that's insane. Uh, huh. uh, it's a fascinating. Wow. Thing. So yeah, well, I guess we can do two and one as a bundle deal. Number two, Ballad of Buster Scruggs, the short, and then number one, All Gold Canyon. That's it uh, for both of us. So apparently, we have definitive rankings that we've established here for Watch Your <laughs> Repeat. I think this is possible. I think this is definitely a first. I'm pretty sure we differed on the MCU. I know we differed last year on our. Uh, our best of for for 2017. So uh, yeah, I think this is the f- I think this is the first time we've ever had a consensus rankings on anything we've done. We're we usually have. very close to each other with with maybe you know minute differences, but this is a uh, this is the this first is, is, you heard it here is, first. Uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, so yeah, um, well let's talk a little bit about why we put them uh, as the top two. Um, for me, I, I guess I, I put I put All Gold Canyon ahead of Buster Scruggs because I find it to be more satisfying on the whole. Like I feel like, as you mentioned, I think a little bit uh, in a little while back, Buster Scruggs is like the best introduction to this film because it, it, it you know it it's very catchy, you know, it grips you. The songs are great and everything. It's just and it's, it's really on the nose, right? It's very on the nose. Yeah, it's it's really fun. It's really captivating, and I think All Gold Canyon has a little bit more. A little bit more meat on the bones, uh, if you want to put it like that, <laughs> because because uh, you've done it already. So I'm going to use that comparison. Um, I th- I think that the Ballad of Buster Scruggs is probably the most on the nose entertaining of them of any of the shorts. Sure. But I think All Gold Cannon has I think the most depth to it. I think it has I, I think it just has the most content in it that that really struck me for different reasons and i think that's why it has to be number one is because it kind of hit me from a few different places of well shit it's beautiful you know cinematography is fantastic tom waits is fantastic but just you know maybe maybe i'm just a sucker for happiness but the actual end result of this one is probably the most satisfying of all of them as well but also the journey that that gets you there you know it it, it takes you on the little bit of roller coaster of emotions you know and and you start to like, you know, uh, for me, I was like, this prospector is like, oh, this is a weird fucking dude, you know, uh, just kind of narrating to himself a little bit, climbing trees, stealing eggs, like, eh, well, the owl's watching, maybe I'll put some eggs back. And, you know, he's just, just he's seeing just a him. He's fucking genuinely nice guy. He's just so yeah, good. And I, and I I enjoyed that. And then the conflict that arises when, you know, this jack off comes in and shoots him in the back. I felt upset. I was like, what the fuck, man? You know, I was, I was, I was invested. I was like, I'm, I'm into the, you know, like I was apprehensive of this man to begin with, but by the time that happened, I was fucking livid, you know. And I was, I was like, fuck, man. You know, like I, I kind of, you know, I guess this is the fourth in the series. I'm like, all right, I get it. There's going to be a dark ending, and I'm like, ah, uh, can't, 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 can't the Coen Brothers just throw us the bone here or something like that? And then they kind of did, you know. Yeah. You know, it was. It was there was a little bit more to it after that, and then we, you know he got his comeuppance, and I was just like, "Fuck yeah, dude, you go, you go, man, yeah. you go, old man, and Mister Pocket." I was just, yeah, I, I this is the one. I, I, I already brought up Castaway, but I, I think it's I think it's a fair comparison. Where I was just like, "I'm invested, I'm into this. Like this is this is 
this is my shit. I really like this. I was I was invested to the point where he, when he found Mr. Pocket, I'm going to show myself up again. Um, when he found Mr. Pocket, I got a little emotional. I was just very fucking happy. It made me feel happy in my heart. It did. Uh, it's just very good. It's a very good experience watching that man find his... It's, uh, he's presumably be looking for Mr. Pocket his whole fucking life, dude. And he finally finds Mr. Pocket. And he's got tears swelling up in his eyes. He's so happy. You know? And it's... ah, it, I don't know. It's just very rewarding. It's a very good thing. And I think Buster Scruggs is the most... Definitely one of the most entertaining. You walk away with the tune stuck in your head, and uh, it's a fun experience, and he's a very uh, charismatic character, and, um, you know, he's just, he's he's cool, but at the same time, there's a lot of subtlety to the way All Gold Canyon's made, um, and I, the score is outstanding, and I, when, when a single... When a single actor is able to carry uh, a role uh, or or a piece for you know a, a given a, if he can carry the piece at all by himself, um, I'm a sucker for that stuff. Like uh, like Castaway, that's probably the best example. Um, I think it's a mix for it. It it it's a testament to the actor's credibility and their uh, their abilities and stuff and. Um, and I think they make for very authentic, very good experiences when they're done right. And this one was done really good. Really enjoyed it. And I'm curious. I want to hear. I want to hear your thoughts next time you run through the when you listen to the soundtrack of this movie. Uh, I want to. I want to know if you're able to to discern which one is from or which ones are from uh, from the short. Because um, I can, and I can always tell, and it always makes me really happy. It's really good. It's a really good fucking short, and that's why it's my number one. I really enjoyed it. Plus, it's it's shot beautifully. It's a very beautiful short. So, that's what I got. That's what I got. We have the same scores, dude. What are the chances of that? I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, it's actually it's, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, I don't anticipate we'll repeat that when we talk about our best of 2018, but hey, you never know. Never know. You really, never know. There's so, a lot. Uh, there's a lot of fucking movies in 2018, though. So probably not. That's true. Yeah, our, our pool here was limited to only six, so we had to by default rank six. Whereas we'll probably have a much larger pool to talk about when we get there. But uh, that is for a, another episode, and it might be redundant to talk about that potentially based on when this actually goes up on the regular feed. People might already know uh, that we diverged or didn't diverge in our best of picks. Uh, who knows? Uh, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's that's the ballad of Buster Scruggs. That is truly uh, the ballad of Buster Scruggs. Um, I had fun talking about it. I thought uh, thought it made for a good bonus episode. It was interesting to kind of dive in and hear your thoughts on that. I know you know guys. As I just said, we talked about it, or you talked about it rather a, a little bit. Um, you know, on the regular episodes a while back, but. Uh, it's good to have a little bit more of a, a in-depth conversation about it, get into it. And it's the Coen Brothers, man. It's uh, it's can't-miss material, as as per freaking usual. So um, let me simply say, uh, for my final piece on this, check it out on Netflix, man. That's, that's it. It's as simple as that. It's It doesn't get much simpler than that no. as well. So Very good movie. Watch yeah. it. I recommended it to Colton, and he thoroughly enjoyed it. So maybe you will too. Watch it. It's fun. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. And you heard it here first. <laughs> maybe. Unless you listen to another podcast that talked about it already. In which case, our opinion's better. Well, you heard our uh, opinion here first. You did hear our opinion for, here first. And um, yeah. So thank you for <laughs> listening. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, can I just talk for a little bit longer? I, I don't know. I'm feeling, feeling a little bit... Uh, a little bit chatty. Uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed what you heard, uh, we encourage you to spread the word. Uh, so that is particularly applicable to our supporters on Patreon. Uh, they are far and few between. Um, but if you want to spread the word to non-listeners of the podcast, to listen to the podcast in the first place, that's obviously helpful. Um, but even amongst listeners of the podcast, um, if you want to say, hey, $2 a month really isn't that much. And 
you get cool episodes like this one. You get to talk about the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. You get to talk about. I mean, we've done we've done some good stuff in the past. Marvel Cinematic Universe episodes were like collectively like seventy four hours long. So I understand the hesitation with that. But we've been we've been good since. You know, we've done some some fun topics. Um, and it's a nice thing with this uh, the bonus episodes is we get a chance to just dive right in, talk about things we want to talk about. And that's cool. And I think that's the beauty of the bonus episodes. And I, I hope that uh, our listeners enjoy them. Um, and if you don't want to support us on Patreon, it's not going to hurt our feelings. You know, uh, if you just want to support us any way you can, that is absolutely your prerogative. Um, just spread the on word. On that note. You know what I'm saying? Just spread yeah, the word. Yeah. Just, you know, just, just, you know, say some words. It doesn't, they don't have to be kind words. Just words in general. Were kind yeah. words, but. Yeah, just words in general. Know. It's cool. Um, but. Uh, if you want to follow us um, on social media, you can do so at WRR Pod for Twitter, Watch Review Repeat for Facebook. Uh, our website is watchreviewrepeat.com. Check it out uh, again for uh, any potential uh, Patreon support. Again, the, that's the premium tab top left, and the Become a Patron button will get you where you need to be for that. Uh, and it has all of our episodes, episode descriptions. It's really pretty. Andrew designed it. So I'm, I'm giving him. I'm giving a credit. Oh, that's here. nice of you, uh, man. That's nice. So it. Uh, I mean, I, I mostly maintain it at this point. Um, <laughs> so I'm throwing a little bit of shade as well, but it, it looks damn good, and it would not look damn good without Andrew's involvement. So uh, it cuts both ways. If you have any questions, <laughs> comments, or suggestions, uh, maybe you have some rankings. If you happen to watch uh, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, maybe you again felt that our rankings were completely backwards. Send us your thoughts. I'd be I'd be curious to, to to hear what you thought about that. I think that would be quite interesting. Watch review repeat at gmail.com. That's our account. Intro and outro track is Mechanolith by Kevin McLeod, licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. Our next bonus episode will be coming sometime in February, uh, hopefully February 1st, if we can kind of get back onto a uh, regular basis. We have ideas for what we would like to cover, um, but we're not uh, 100% certain on what it is we are going to talk about, at least as of recording this episode. Uh, if you're listening to this on the regular feed, then we have almost certainly discussed what our upcoming bonus episode is going to be on. So I would say go by that because I trust my future self. But I think that is it for this bonus episode. Andrew, this is the part where you say... Late- <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on, you got to you got you got to switch into your into your accent. Um, um, wait, can I say can I say what I normally say in a western accent? You could try it. I, don't I think know. you should try it. <laughs> hey, sure. I got no no titan over there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Later's on the men, Jay. Mm.